Today's game is being brought to you in part by Valley of the Sun United Way, the new MP Lab ICD4, and by One More Time Productions, where that was good, but let's just do it one more time. Welcome back, everyone. For those of you just joining us, we're in the final minutes of the championship game between the Chippers and the Wolves. The Wolves started the scoring with an impressive touchdown drive in the second quarter and have also converted on two field goals. The Chippers had two scoring drives but could only come up with field goals on both of them. That's right, Willie. So the Wolves are ahead with a score of 13-6 with only 1.58 left on the clock. The Chippers have been progressing well down the field and have the ball on the Wolves' 35-yard line. The Chippers have all three of their timeouts remaining, but remain behind by seven points. So another field goal is not an option anymore. Exactly. They must get a touchdown and an extra point to at least tie the game and force overtime. Before we get back to the action, let us now reintroduce you to the Chippers' offensive line. Steve Drehobel, MCU 8. Rich Simonsek, Vice President of Analog Interface and Quality. Mitch Little, Worldwide Sales and Applications. Matthew Bunker, Backend Operations. Mike Finley, VP, Fab Operations. Dan Mellon-Eric, Vice President, Fab Five Operations, Colorado Springs. Kim Van Herk, VP, General Counsel. Eric Bjornholt, CFO. Mitch Obolsky, Vice President of A Lot of Stuff. Summit Mitra, 32-bit and wireless. Patrick Johnson, MSLD, CPG, TCG, SPG, and Corporate Marcom. Brander Derwinga, Vice President of Memory Products. Rami Kanama, Vice President, TCG. Mark Wrighton, Vice President of Licensing. Dan Turmer, Automotive. Brian Lydiard, the MSLD. Joe Thompson, MCU 16. Rod Drake, MCU 32. Nurid Adivran, Vice President, Secure Products Group. Steve Caldwell, Wireless Solutions Group. Bonnie Divanaha, HMID. Robert Williams, Information Services. Lauren Carr, VP Human Resources. Ganesh Murthy, President and Chief Operating Officer. Steve Sanghi, CEO. And here we have some of the other key players for this outstanding Chippers team. Now Willie, the Chippers had several other players. Gary, Matias, Alfredo, Nuaz, Shadarshan. Unfortunately, they showed up in soccer uniforms thinking they were going to be playing European football. No European football here today. But anyway, the Chippers have a handful of great coaches. There's Matt Chapman, L.B. Day, Esther Johnson, and Wade Meyercourt. Well, here we go. Can this team do it again? Down 13 to six, this is the defending champs' last game of the season. Third and 15 at the 35-yard line. Is this potentially the last drive of the season? Can the Chippers score a touchdown? Net 42, Omaha, 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 hike! Sangi with the pass out to Finley carries the ball and gets pushed out of bounds at around the 28-yard line. Oh no, now the Chippers are in a world of hurt. If they go for the field goal, they're still behind and may never get the ball back. 
There you see Steve talking with the coaches. Will they try a fourth down play and attempt to pick up a first down? It seems risky, Christina. The chippers are indeed bringing out Mitra. It looks like they're going for the field goal, but that's not enough. Here's the snap, and it's good. That makes the score 13 to nine, but there's only 135 left on the clock. Let's go to the sidelines where DC Dance AZ, Microchip's cheer squad, is about to perform. like the only option the chippers have now is to try an onside kick. It's a risky call because if they don't recover the ball, the game is basically over. You can see a lot of these fans worried, and some even leaving, thinking this game is over. The chippers are bringing in Dan Malinari for an onside kick. Here's the kick. It's a good one, and the chipper Steve Caldwell recovers the ball. This is unbelievable. Just listen to this crowd. They're going crazy. You can never count out the chippers. They're not done until they're done. 125 remains on the clock, and they still have three timeouts. Break. Ball is at their own 45-yard line. Sangy hands to Ryden. He finds a hole and carries it to the Wolves 45. Nice carry there, Mark. He picks up the first down and smartly gets out of bounds. Great play. OK, guys, play action this time. I'll give the ball to Ganesh, but act as if I still have the ball. Defense will charge at me. Ganesh, throw it deep to one of our receivers. Break on three. One, two, three, break. The crowd is getting louder. First and 10 at the Wolves 45. Omaha, Omaha, Here's Omaha. the snap. Hike. Sangi play action with Ganesh. Defense is chasing Sangi. Wait. Ganesh has the ball. He throws it deep to Mitch Little. Mitch catches it and runs to the 35 where he gets tackled hard. And now the Chippers will take their first time out. Oh, what a play. First and 10 now. Game clock is at 59 seconds. Hike. Sangi drops back. Throws to Obolski. Nice catch by Obolski as he's tackled down at the 28. The chippers take another timeout, leaving just one left. Second down and three now with only 48 seconds left. Sengi drops back again. Throws over the middle to Johnson. Oh, incomplete. That's a tough one right there, but the clock does stop. 40 seconds remaining. Well, now it's third down and three. Steve is talking to Lauren on the sideline. It looks like they're deciding to bring in Matthew Bunker, maybe to push through for a conversion. That's exactly what they do. Hand off to Bunker. He pushes his way through the defense and picks up the first down. The chippers don't want to use their final timeout. They're going no huddle. First and 10 at the 25, 30 seconds remaining. Sangi is under pressure. Oh, he's sacked at the 37 yard line. 12 yard loss and the chippers now have to use their final timeout. Oh my, that was a hit. Well, Willie, it's looking very tough for the chippers right now. While we have a minute here, let's take a look at the interview we did with Sangi before the game. Steve, the CEO of your challenger says that he won't allow your strategy to work this time like it did last time. What do you have to say to that? 
<laughs> well, Sherry, I don't have much to say about the personal fantasies of my challenger. But the analysts agree with him. They say they don't understand your strategy. On that point, I agree with the analysts. They don't understand a strategy. That's why they are the analysts, and we're running the most successful team in business. Some great stuff there with Sherry, but now let's get Omaha. back to the action. Sangi steps back and throws the Simon set. He catches it and runs out of bounds at about the 17 yard line, short of the first down. The clock stops at seven seconds. The Chippers have one play left and 17 yards to go with no timeouts. They need a touchdown. This team has been tough all year, but right now it's not looking good. The crowd has grown silent and somber awaiting this final play. Okay guys, this is it. We got one last play left. I'm gonna throw the ball to one of the wide receivers. So defend me well, give it all you got, and let's take it to the end zone. Break on three. One, two, three, break! break. Sangi looks left, no one is open, looks right, and finds Eric on the sideline. He throws it. Eric catches it and reaches for the goal line. Touchdown, Chippers! They did it! They did it! Hold on a second. The Wolves appear to be challenging the call on the field. The receiver may have stepped out of bounds. Head referee Eric Lewis is reviewing the play. This is a close call. It looks to me like the ball broke the plane before he stepped out of bounds. I'm glad I don't have to make this call. The crowd is watching the replay on the big screen awaiting the referee's call. After review of the play, the receiver broke the plane of the goal line, maintained possession, and was in bounds. The call on the field stands. Touchdown, Chippers. Chippers win. Chippers win. Unbelievable. They've done it again. The crowd is going crazy, and I don't blame them. This was truly a game for the ages. Let's go down to the field where Sherry is standing by. Steve, congratulations on another amazing win. That was quite a touchdown. What are you gonna do next? I think I'm gonna take the kids to Disneyland. Thanks everyone for joining us today. I'm Willie Fitzgerald joined by Christina Johnson here in the booth today. But before we leave, we would like to congratulate Microchip on becoming a $4 billion company. They truly showcase that they are one world, one team, with one goal. One more. <laughs>